I think this subject really is a classic uh, where we need to make sure we get those big shapes in place and working for us. Then we need to micromanage where we place the chickens, the fence line, all those smaller shapes. So let's see how I go. I've chosen a subject in one of my favorite areas of Australia to paint. It's the Murray River Valley. It's our longest river, uh, but it's part of a catchment area. Not that I've got any of the river in this painting, it's more buildings and uh, a farming uh, buildings and a farmyard, but it's just a magnificent area, normally fairly green and fertile, even though um, I have visited in one summer, November, and it was very dry. It was so, so dry. It was really in the grips of a fairly bad drought. But this was from an earlier trip. Uh, I forget the name of the small little town, but um, you almost can do the whole drive, the Murray River Valley Highway, it, which then leads into the Kiwa Valley Highway, which is another. So it's just great painting area upon great painting area. So if you're ever coming to Australia and you wanna know where a great area to paint, this is definitely one of my favorites. There's as I mentioned, the river, there's creeks, there's, uh, in winter, there's be snow-capped mountains up in this area, but it's lots of farms, cows, sheep, you name it, and, and farm yards and farm buildings and silos. And it, uh, I've probably done 50 or 60 paintings from this region alone. And, uh, and when you think it's about 17 hours drive from my home, so it's normally only on a special trip to the area when I'm either teaching or visiting Melbourne, that I'll go up to this area. Uh, so to, to have an area that has so many great subjects is a testament to how good it is. A lot of the early Australian painters, I think uh, Harold Herbert and uh, Arthur Streeton, uh, William Beckwith McGuinness, uh, probably I'm not sure if he got right up into the Murray region but he got up into this direction because this area is actually um, half the way up three quarters the way up not as good i don't know or feel but once again constructing those big shapes with this guy and where i'm working now was probably one of the trickiest areas because there's a bit of a conveyor belt machine and we've got the angle of the roof then the opposing angle of the shadow from the silo and the right hand building then the the, uh, the contraption, it was probably the only area that I had trouble with overall. And for this one, I decided to Photoshop a few little chickens in just to help carry the color of the orange brick wall through. Uh, and when you think I've actually photographed this scene in 2010, so it's taken me nearly 15 years, 14, 15 years to, to get round to it, but it's always the way um, you go on a trip and sometimes you forget about certain scenes and uh, and certain scenes you sort of think, you know what, I'll, I'm not ready to paint that. Um, for me, it's, it's a fairly um, desire driven process for me. I really do want to, to fall in love with that subject to try and, and, and to be fascinated with it, to try and get the most out of it as well. Because this was actually quite a challenge. Um, and it's a scene that I would think to myself that I would normally paint fairly easy, but as I mentioned, that little tricky area, because I, I didn't mind the left-hand side where I'm using the fence line to uh, come in. Then there's a little bit of galvanized metal steel roofing that they've used as a little barrier on the right, and I think a little watering, a uh, little... Um, area for the cows or sheep. I'm, I think it's more of a cow area, but there were some tricky parts. I felt I had control of it all the way through, which was always a, uh, a good feeling because um, most paintings, and you may get to see that I try not to paint too many of the same subjects. because Sometimes familiarity, I believe, does breed a, uh, a, a recipe that can enter your work. So I try to jump from farmyard scene to Venetian scene to snow scene, interior, 
a cow seen trying to jump all over so that I don't become too formulaic. Ultimately, our eye becomes accustomed to certain colours and our hand has a certain gestural uh, reflex and, and um, uh, motion. But the one area, and some of those things we cannot control, but we certainly can control the subject that we paint. Because actually, if I were to turn 180 right behind me, there is actually the Mount Kosciuszko, which is our highest mountain. I think it's only about 7,000 feet, which is, I think, about 3,000 uh, meters. And you would, it's more of a, a small mountain compared to the big ones in the Rockies in Europe. Uh, and it's one that when you travel up, you travel up slowly. You don't sort of suddenly drive up and bang, there's the mountain. Uh, so it's not super imposing, but there are a few scenes on this road that you can have it as a marvellous backdrop. And I haven't ever done a uh, deliberate trip to the ski fields, but hoping sort of next year, if all goes to plan, that we'll do a series from the ski fields, from the ski region with some snow-capped mountains. The weather is always uh, the tricky one. Uh, I don't mind the cold, but um, and we'll make sure we're sort of rugged up. Um, but yeah, it's always getting um, uh, enough light and enough um, uh, sunny days or days because uh, the wet season is in winter. So that's always in the back of my mind as for will we get enough um, good sunny days or or even just days without rain. So, and with saying that, I'm now bound to get four out of five days pouring down rain. <laughs> but we'll see how we go. That's always good, to, I think, to have something to look forward to. Uh, I think with, with, with your art is to plan little local trips, uh, trips around your area. Um, I've done some paintings of a, the Maritime Museum and you can actually visit the museum. And uh, I've a few times tried to actually, because you can actually oversee it so you can get a good view without having to pay and go in. But I've been trying to find the right time, the right time of the year, day, to go in and, and to get the best light because the, the dry dock does cast quite big shadows. Um, so yeah, so there's always little things ticking away and I do aim to try and get some portraiture done as well. So we're always looking for new ideas. The takeaway from this painting, I think that I learned was that even though with some of the best uh, composition subjects, even once we've enhanced it, is that not everything is there to paint. Not everything is falls in place. Uh, I mentioned how I sort of got into trouble with that area and, but ultimately with that little break from the painting, came back about a week later and just adjusted that area again. So I think that was the great takeaway. Even though we can get great subjects, there's always some little micro and macro areas that still do require uh, some solving of certain problems. Um, so, And sometimes we can blow them up out of proportion, but I think I got this one uh, and I got some lovely softened edges from the shadows as well. So hope you really enjoyed this one. All the best. Bye for now.